I've talked a lot about lottery winners on stream before. I've pulled up quite a few of them. I'm going to imagine a couple of the ones that I've talked about he also brings up because some of the stories go so hard. From accidentally throwing a three million pound lottery ticket in the bin to spending an entire $16 million prize in under 90 days. These are the absolute dumbest lottery winners of all time. Thanks to Reese with Jose Shard. Antonio Quarto, who <laughs> Thanks to Reese Shard and Adam. Another thing is a lot of lottery winners end up dead. I guess a lot's the wrong word. But there's been a, quite a few cases of someone winning the lottery and then getting murdered, usually by like a family member or someone that knows that they won. I think one of them that we talked about on stream was the guy who won the lottery, got killed and buried in his own backyard, and they put like a concrete slab over him or something. Whoa, who was that again? Lottery winner buried in concrete. His name was Abraham Lee Shakespeare. And this was in 2000 and, uh, 2009. He won 17 million in 06. Prosecutors said Moore withdrew 1 million from Shakespeare's bank account. They caught they caught the woman who did it. She uh, this woman shot and killed him and then this is that uh, going from there. Prosecutors said Moore withdrew 1 million from Shakespeare's bank account, spending the money on a Hummer, Corvette, a truck and a vacation. Shakespeare was shot twice in the chest and was found buried under a concrete slab in the backyard of a home Moore had purchased. And by the time of his death, the sheriff said all 30 million had been spent. Yeah. Winning the lottery brings out the fucking devil in your family. He is far from an isolated case of that happening. That's just one that I remember because it was brutal. And it also happened in Tampa. Well, around Tampa. I actually don't think it was Tampa. Where was it in Florida again? It was somewhere close to Tampa. It might have been Lakeland. It was Lakeland. Always go off grid if you win. Yep, you have to. You cannot let anyone know when you win the lottery, or else you put your entire life in jeopardy. You cannot trust people once you come into that kind of wealth suddenly. People lose their fucking minds over it. They announce it. That's true. They do announce it, which is straight up dangerous, but I saw a couple people do something smart to get around it. <coughs> they, uh, uh, one person claimed it in like a full disguise, and then another person completely changed their name. <coughs> so there are ways around it, but you have to get kind of creative. I think it's super stupid that they announced the, the winner. Like, it should be an option to elect them to it. And maybe it is some places. Who almost lost his entire lottery fortune after getting someone else to claim the money for him. You see, when Jose won the $750,000 jackpot back in 2010, he was living in the US illegally, so Jose asked his boss to claim the prize on his behalf, oh. as he feared he couldn't claim the money without potentially facing legal trouble and deportation. This worked out perfectly until Jose's boss began to falsely state that he was the one who had actually purchased the ticket. Taking legal action against his boss was risky, given Jose wasn't supposed supposed to be in the country at all. <laughs> However, Jesus. given he had security camera footage of him purchasing the ticket, Jose did so and was able to prove that he was the rightful owner to the $750,000 prize. Only $250,000 this went to taxes, another $250,000 oh, was spent no. on court fees, and throughout the legal process, Jose was jailed for drunk driving and was deported back to Guatemala as soon as he won the court case. However, at least Jose Antonio Quartoc got to keep some of his winnings, as Denise Rossi wasn't so fortunate. When I guess I could put a all in all, that could have been a lot worse. Still walking away 250k? I thought he was going to be, like, almost in the negative after all of that. Legal cases? That shit is expensive. All that hoopla. And then going to prison? Like, at the end of the day, still somehow pocketing 250k of that is really not bad. 1.3 million back in 1996. <coughs> She'd been married to Thomas Rossi for over 25 years, yet their relationship was apparently lacking in transparency, as Denise didn't tell her husband about the win, and instead filed for divorce only a days after buying the lucky ticket. That's I huge. Tell Thomas because what I a power move. To take the money away from me. I went to the Lottery Commission office and told them I was married but contemplating divorce. They told me to file before I got my first check, which I did. Denise was initially successful so in finding the money from her now ex-husband, 
as for a whole two years after their divorce, Thomas had no idea that Denise had ever won the lottery. However, in May 1999, a letter was sent to Thomas's home address asking if Denise was interested in a lump sum buyout of her lottery winnings. This was the first Thomas knew about the lottery prize. He confirmed that Denise was a winner with the California lottery and given they were still married at the time of the win, Thomas launched a lawsuit stating that he was entitled to half of the prize money. The judge specifically Damn, found that Denise's unlucky. failure to disclose the lottery winnings constituted fraud, oppression and malice and as a result, the trial court awarded Thomas 100% of the lottery winnings which left Denise with less than nothing considering she also Yikes. had to pay for her own legal fees. Damn, what a fat L for Denise. It honestly sounded like a pretty galaxy brain scheme. I won the lottery, but I know my husband's gonna spend it all, so I'm, I'm getting the fuck out of here. And then it all blows up in her face and she ends up losing all of it. That is an odd ruling, though. I'm kind of surprised about that. They ruled it as fraud, oppression, and malice. By not disclosing the lottery winning before divorcing. Interesting. However, Denise's loss of 1.3 million was still nothing in comparison to Evelyn Adams. Dubbed the luckiest woman in America, Evelyn Adams became the first person in human history to win the lottery twice, initially for 3.9 million in October 1985, before winning another 1.4 million only four That's pretty months good. later. With the probability of this win being approximately 1 in 17.3 trillion, Evelyn it was basically guaranteed. No lottery luck left by stating that she was going <coughs> to quit playing and instead began to buy various businesses including the convenience store where the lucky tickets had been purchased. Why? While you could argue that this was a smart move, Emily no. still hadn't fixed her gambling <laughs> what? problem. That's not a smart move at all. Why would you buy the businesses? Like, it, it makes sense to try and, like, get something to generate income, but why would you just buy convenience stores? She could have absolutely targeted something less risky. But that is, I mean, that is a big dick maneuver, though. I won the lottery here, so if I buy it, maybe more good luck will come my way. And instead of buying more lottery tickets, she instead took the rest of her winnings to the Atlantic City casinos, where she lost her entire remaining fortune to the slot machines. Without any money left, her businesses failed one after She quit other. before By she 2012, won. 2012, Evelyn was living in a trailer park while stating to the media, winning the lottery isn't always what it's cracked up to be. Kelly Rogers likely had a similar outlook, as after winning over 1.8 million pounds at the age of only 16, her life was also <laughs> ruined. Initially, Kelly stated, I will not go wild and spend loads. I'm gonna take some advice. Oh, that didn't an age well, I'm sure. Hopefully, I will make us all comfortable. I want to help my family, but I won't change. I just want a normal home, nothing posh. I just want a normal car as well. However, as soon as she received the money, Kelly instead spent eleven thousand five hundred pounds on two boob jobs, three hundred thousand pounds on clothes, makeup, and tattoos, as well as eighty-five thousand pounds on top of the range sports cars. Still, plenty Kelly of money left over. Two hundred and fifty thousand pounds on holidays to locations including oh, Mexico and Euro Disney. One hundred and eighteen thousand pounds on gifts to former boyfriends 109 118,000 pounds on gifts to former boyfriends what the fuck why I mean what a great deal for them though yeah I broke up with her she was weird uh, but she did just send me like a Tesla Model S and which I guess is cool I don't know why she did that but yeah thanks for that £90,000 in unreturned loans to friends and family members, and £50,500 on solicitor's fees, all of which being purchased while she was still in high school. Kelly did make a few smart purchases, such as an £180,000 bungalow and a £96,000 home for her mum. However, by the end of the year, Kelly was back to square one, being on well- Damn, less than a year. ...pounds left in her account. She since stated, it was too much money for someone so young. Even if you say your life won't change, it does, and often not for the better. Yeah, I just wish I was a bit older at the time of winning it because I think at 16 you're still just a child and overnight you've just got to grow up and become an adult. Which is probably why she's now an advocate for raising the UK's legal gambling age from 16 to 18. Kelly Rogers certainly spent her money poorly. However, at least she had the chance to spend it as 25 year old Amanda Clayton from Detroit was no longer alive by the end of her spending spree. Yeah, Amanda it sounds about right. That happens quite a bit. 2011, it seemed as though her life had been <coughs> changed overnight. However, her win quickly became 
controversial after the media learned that she was still collecting food stamps and benefit payments despite having won the lottery. Detroit woman is now the second lotto winner in the state to keep taking food stamps after hitting it big. And Amanda Clayton, who won a million bucks and took home a $700,000 lump sum, the 24-year-old says even though she now owns two homes, she figured she was still allowed to use a bridge card. After being confronted about the behavior, Amanda had the following to say. I thought that they would cut me off, but since they didn't, I thought maybe it was okay because I'm not working. And shortly thereafter, she was charged with two felony counts what? of welfare fraud and was ordered to pay back the $5,500 worth of food stamps she'd received. While Amanda quickly paid the $5,500 back, she never got the chance to spend the rest of the money, as only six months later, she would unfortunately overdose in one of her two homes. He says she was tormented by the fame and the problems that came Shit, with winning Jesus the lottery. Christ. What's the point of having money if you're not gonna have happiness? He says she didn't want the money anymore and bought things for her family and set up college funds for her children. He says she only had $67,000 of her winnings left. The end to Amanda Clayton's story Jesus was somewhat Christ. unexpected. However, a two-second glance at Ryan McGee is more than enough to predict that this lottery win would eventually end in disaster. Why? He looks like he's going to spend it responsibly. He looks like he's going to have fun with the money and make big returns on it too. Winning 6.4 million pounds back in 2008 at the age of 27, Ryan was placed on the Sunday Times Top 100 Rich List for Young People. He purchased a luxury mansion in his home country of Ireland, which featured five bedrooms, an indoor swimming pool, a full champagne bar, and a two-car garage where he kept his brand new Ferrari 458 Italia. However, as you nice. might expect, <laughs> this is where things began to go terribly. Only three years after buying the Ferrari, Ryan slipped off the road, crashing the car into a field, mainly because he get was another driving one. in the snow. Locals were amazed Ryan was driving the Ferrari in that weather, especially when he had a more suitable Range Rover he could use. The Ferrari was not understood to be running on winter tires, which, while costing around £4,400, hugely hey, boosted and handled in and icy conditions. The prime Ryan's yet. property development business then dissolved, which was accompanied by a divorce from his wife and the sale of his luxury home. Then, two years later, Ryan McGee was pulled over driving an uninsured Ford Focus without a license. However, the Jesus, most interesting Ryan. part is that he had to claim legal aid, which is a service for those who are unable to afford a lawyer. Now, Ryan McGee was a complete idiot with his money. However, he still looks like Albert Einstein when compared to- Wait, did- Wait, what? So what did he do with the rest of the money? Buying that luxury home, buying that luxury car and all that shit, that's, that's not $6.4 million. The fuck happened to the rest? Did he lose it? Misplace it? Divorce. <laughs> I mean, I guess he could have lost it all in the divorce. <laughs> that would that would be tragic a complete idiot with his money. However, he still looks like Albert Einstein <clears throat> compared to Martin Tot. When Martin and his wife Kay won three million pounds back in 2001, they didn't go in to claim the prize because, well, they had no idea that they were winners. They purchased a ticket in passing, completely Man, forgotten about Man, she it. looks so mad. Holy. Good God. That is like the hardest frown I've seen in a minute. That's like a Pixar animation mad face. Wow. Would only come to realize that they were the winners after hearing about the unclaimed prize over six months later. The main problem was that at some point, the ticket had been misplaced or thrown out completely. Despite frantically searching, the pair couldn't find their ticket, but were sure they had won because the jackpot numbers matched the ones they used every week. Computer records in their local Londis proved Kay really had purchased the ticket, and the thrilled pair rushed to tell lottery organizer Camelot to claim their prize. But they fell victim to a little known rule, stating lost oh, tickets no. must be reported within 30 days. Days. After 45 days of deliberation, Camelot told the devastated couple that they would be That's so the sad. Jackpot, what and the fuck? As a fuck? result, the couple's marriage eventually came to an end. We'd only known each other Jesus. for two years, and the lottery ordeal quickly highlighted our differences. All we did was bicker. Sadly, both of us agreed we should split, and Kay moved out. Martin seems to have convinced himself that losing the ticket ended up being a good thing, having stated, For a long time, I lost sight of who I was and what I believed in. But I can honestly say I'm glad I didn't get the three. I don't now. think you mean. 
that. There is no guarantee it would have brought me happiness. And if there's anyone else who would have agreed with this statement, it definitely would have been the most miserable lottery winner of all time, William Post. When William won a $16.2 million jackpot back in 1988, he had just $2.46 in his bank account and was able to purchase the lucky ticket by selling a ring for $40 to a local pawn shop. This in conjunction with the time he'd spent in jail for cashing invalid checks, highlighted William Post's awful money management skills and acted as foreshadowing for how poorly his lottery win was eventually going to be spent. Only 84 days after receiving the $16.2 million, William Post had spent the entire fortune on a boat, a lease for a restaurant in what? Florida, a used car lot as well as a private jet. However, even after all of the money ha had been spent- In 1988, he was able to spend $16 million in 84 days? That's actually a craziness. Like, that is an absurd amount. 16 million and 88 is quite a lot more than it is today. And he was able to bust through that. Holy fuck. Yeah, that jet must have went insano style. Thanks to the resub trumpet and Saru took on a further $500,000 loan to purchase a mansion in Oil City, Pennsylvania. The problem was that William hadn't actually purchased the original ticket himself and had rather given the money to his girlfriend who had bought the winning ticket for him. Because of this, she was able to successfully sue him for one third of the winnings, meaning that Post now owed $5.4 million to his ex-girlfriend oh, from God. the $16.2 million that he no longer had. Since Post was unable to make this payment, the judge ordered that his bank account be frozen until he was able to come up with the money. However, before he was able to sell enough stuff to pay the 5.4 million, William was arrested and ordered to serve a 6 to 24 month prison term for an assault charge from six years prior. Toward the end of his life, Post was on his seventh that came out of nowhere. over a million dollars in debt and was getting by on food stamps and a job paying $450 per month. However, William Post still doesn't have the craziest lottery win story of all time. That title goes to Andrew Jackson Whitaker, whose life would change forever after winning $315 million back in 2002. Oh. Unlike almost- Oh! Finally, a Wumbo Jumbo winner. It's been all small fish so far, but now it's finally someone that wins the Powerball. I always wonder how you could possibly, like in any universe, spend this kind of money. Like winning the Powerball, even with the most reckless spending, even if you were like Ryan and that 16-year-old girl we just learned about, I just don't think it'd be possible to spend it all. 115 million back in 2002. Unlike almost everyone else in this video, Whitaker was actually quite successful prior to winning the lottery, having built up a net worth of over 17 million with oh, the what assistance the fuck? of his construction company. And while this would imply okay. that he was in a position to manage a large lottery win, this isn't what would happen. Whitaker instantly donated 10% of the winnings to churches, Christian groups, and spent a further 14 million establishing the Jack Whitaker Foundation, which provided free food and clothing for low income families in West. Virginia. That's nice. Obviously, you're doing God's work with all this money. Yes, I am. I'm helping a lot of people and I plan to help a lot more. He then drove back to the convenience store where he had purchased the ticket before giving the clerk a $44,000 check, a $123,000 house, oh. and a brand new Jeep Cherokee, which was followed this by guy's a saint. himself a Lamborghini in which he drove uh, around his well, neighborhood throwing money out of the window. Oh, but... After flaunting this wealth, his Lamborghini was broken okay. into where thieves stole $545,000 in cash. However, this apparently oh. was much of a wake-up call as his car was then broken into for the second time, resulting in the loss of a further two hundred thousand dollars cash oh Jack my Whitaker's god daughter passed away what what just holy shit that has to be the most expensive car theft ever busting a window and getting 500 grand off the fucking seat and then another 200 grand later like this guy seems to have a great heart but no brain of a further $200,000 cash. Jack Whitaker's granddaughter passed away, his daughter then passed away, which was followed by a divorce with his wife. And now Jesus. you've lost your granddaughter, you're about to be divorced from your wife. Where does this ever end? Leading him to state that he had lost everything. I pretty much lost everything I held dear in my life. You got lots of money. Money is, money, money has never meant anything to me. You have to have money to exist in this world, but money, money doesn't rule the world. Money, God, that's so sad. This poor guy. Happy. And that he wished he had never purchased the lottery ticket in the first place. My wife had said she'd wish that she'd torn the ticket up 
Well, I wish that we had torn the ticket up too. I just don't like what I've become. I was sad. What the fuck? Well, wow. That last guy was heavy. He didn't cover any of the lottery winners who got killed. He covered one of them who overdosed, but not the phenomenon of lottery winners getting killed. Probably the right call from Sonny. I would I would only say a handful of them were like genuinely stupid. Like the last guy, he wasn't dumb at all. Like it was dumb to keep the money in the car that kept getting broken into, but everything else just seemed to come from a place of like genuine kindness. Thanks to the prime Robert and the resub sorry and the bits murdy. I feel so fucking bad for that guy. Is he is he still alive? <clears throat> he should be. It was only two thousand two. What was his name? Jack Jack Whitaker. He is still alive. What's he up to these days? On December 2nd, 2016, 7 a.m., Whitaker's home in Virginia was reported to be on fire. Oh my god! When firefighters arrived, the house was fully engulfed and was deemed a total loss. His wife was home when the fire broke out, but was able to make it out safely. Oh, nope. He passed away in 2020. They just forgot to up, up... Oh, nope. Here it is. I didn't see it in the Wikipedia. Why does the universe hate this man so much? I, man, I don't know. Holy shit. That was... What a terrible ride. What are the... I want to see. Who won that? Does anyone remember the last time the Powerball went over, like, well over a billion dollars? Didn't a 19-year-old kid win that? Or am I misremembering? Oh, someone just won the $2 billion Powerball jackpot. John and Lisa in Tennessee. Oh, actually two people did. And then Maureen and David in Florida. Kid I went to high school with won the Powerball. You should hit him up. I'm sure he'd love to hear from you again. I'm trying to I'm trying to find like what what like what happens when someone loses all this money? Like how could you possibly blow through like a billion dollars? I just don't think you could. There's just an article about how it can happen, but not that it has. I used to play the lottery all the time when I was in college. I was a recent hunter. Maybe I would have won if I kept playing. I should start playing again. Just in case. Shocking, people can spend money. If you had a billion dollars, I legitimately don't think you could spend it all. I mean, maybe over the course of your lifetime, perhaps. But not in any short period of time. Invest in crypto and it'll be gone by the end of the week. Actually... What a great speedrun strat. You are 100% on the money. I didn't even think of that. Super smart. Yeah. If you want to spend a billion dollars instantly, just put it in crypto and you'll never see it again. <clears throat> he just showed people going bankrupt really fast. Well, I'm talking about like a billion dollar winner for Powerball. All the winners we saw here that went bankrupt were like a million, two million, up to six million. That I totally could see happening. Like, that's pretty much guaranteed for a lot of people that win the lottery. Just all of a sudden coming into all that money and just blowing it all at once.